Most churches don't need some ball-in production room with a million buttons in order to broadcast their church services. They'd probably be happy with one or two cameras and probably slides going out to YouTube. That's why that I think the A10 Mini Pro is the best video switcher for most small churches. In fact, I made a video a while back about a whole live stream setup for less than $1,000 that's based around this guy. So check that out up here if you're interested. Also, the link to buy this is in the description below, as always. But calling it the best switcher for most small churches is a pretty big claim. So let's take a look at it and why I think that it is. First, let's take a look at the form factor on this thing. I mean, it's tiny. I don't know if that's obvious on camera, but like, I mean, it fits in two hands. It, this thing is amazingly small. Next, the connectivity. If you look on the back here, we actually have four HDMI inputs, which means that realistically, you could probably do three cameras and a computer with your slides. Then you have your audio ports here, mic one and two. This is a little tricky because they're just aux ports, which is not super ideal when you're coming out of a soundboard, but you can convert your audio and get it into this however you need to. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. Then over on this side, we have an HDMI output for your multi-view. And then right next to it, you actually have a USB-C output. And for this, you have two options. You can either plug it into a computer and use this as a webcam. So this is great if for some reason you wanna stream with OBS or some other software, or you actually just wanna join Zoom calls or something and use this as a video switcher for something. But second of all, which is the way that I use it, you can plug an SSD into this and record directly to it. This is awesome because it means you don't need another expensive recorder in order to actually get your program feed saved to a hard drive. Next up for IO, we actually have an ethernet port here and you'll notice that it's marked ATEM control. So this is actually used to control the ATEM mini over the network. And you can do this in a couple of ways. One, using something like Companion, which I also have a video about up here, or just using ATEM software control running on a computer that happens to be on the same network. You can use this to actually use the switcher, or you can use it to configure settings that you can't get to just with the buttons. And that's how I would probably use it because Next up, you see it actually has a great control surface built into it. I mean, right here on the front, you have these big four buttons to actually switch which camera feed you're using. And you can set this up one of two ways, one where it just is an immediate cut to whichever button you press, or more of a preview program mode where you can use cut and auto to transition between them, whatever fits your workflow. You also have controls for all of your audio up here. You can turn audio on and off for given HDMI inputs, or set them to audio follows video so that you'll get audio for it anytime it goes live. You can also set your audio for mic one and two and actually turn them up, turn them down, turn them on, turn them off. All of the basic audio control you need is actually still built right into this just on the buttons. This is super handy because it means you don't need to use ATEM software control to do most things. You may need it for some of the deeper configuration like compression and EQ if you need to set that, but this gives you most of what you need right here on the control surface. You can also control a picture in picture if you ever want to overlay two sources on top of each other um, without using any kind of a keyer. I personally don't really use this, but it's good to know that it's there. And the next up, you have your transition buttons like I talked about before. You have cut and you have auto, which will be more of a fade transition, but it doesn't have to just be a fade. You can actually change it to a mix or a dip. You can change the amount of time on the transition or even do a push in slide transition if you want to. And finally, you have an FTB button, fade to black. We don't use this a lot, but you know, it's handy anytime something goes wrong and you just need to cut everything real quickly. You've got it built right into this. You also have buttons here to control what's coming out of the HDMI input. That's one of the biggest downsides to this guy, honestly, is that it only has a single output. So that means you can't do a multi-view and a program feed, for example, coming out of this at the same time. But you can output any of your four inputs or the multi-view or the program and switch between them as you need to. So if you wanted to run it as just a program feed, but maybe check your multi-view every once in a while before the show, you could do that. And finally, up here in the corner, we actually have buttons to start and stop recording and start and stop your stream. Wait. You didn't know that this guy could record and stream all from within this box? This is why I say it is my favorite video switcher for a small church. Everything that you need to do is all built into this one box. Remember I mentioned that USB output? Yeah, plug an SSD in and it'll record your program feed. 
And again, that program feed, you can stream it directly to Facebook, YouTube, or wherever it is that you're sending your services. This means that you don't need any kind of external web presenter or running it to a computer in order to use OBS or anything like that. This will do everything for you. And honestly, that's kind of incredible, especially when you consider the price. You ready? 300 bucks. Well, 295 actually. $300 and you get all of that. Four inputs, two audio inputs, streaming, recording all built in. Like, honestly, it's incredible what this thing does for the price and I cannot recommend it enough. It does have a couple of downsides, which I kind of touched on. One, again, the audio inputs are kind of funky and you may not get the best quality audio in the world. You can definitely get something good, but you're gonna be a little bit hindered by that. And two, like I mentioned before, it only has the one output. So you can't do iMag with this, although, Honestly, I think most churches that are gonna be using something like this probably don't need iMag anyway. And maybe I'm wrong. If that's you, drop it in the comments and let me know if that's your use case. And then you've got the obvious things like it's HDMI, not SDI. Although there are SDI versions of this if that's the system you work in. And there's only four inputs. Although there is an ATEM Extreme that has eight inputs. And that one also has two outputs. So you can get the multi-view and the program feed. So. Even though this particular model may not have everything that you need, they might have an ATEM Mini model that does fit your use case. I still think this is probably the best entry for most churches because it's the most well-rounded, but if you have some of those specific use cases that I just mentioned, it's worth checking out the other ones. They get a little bit pricier, and so that's why I feel like they maybe don't make as much sense, but again, the whole lineup is pretty great. And look, I get $300 is still a lot of money, it's not free, but for something like a video switcher, it's a complete bargain. You're not gonna find anything else that cheap that does as much as this does. And second of all, if you're kind of worried about the four inputs and growing out of it, that's okay, because when you do grow out of it and you maybe wanna get a bigger switcher like an ATEM Constellation, you can actually still use this as your stream encoder. And then you don't have to buy a separate web presenter or something else. You can take your output from your bigger constellation, feed it into this and stream to the internet just like you ever did. That's what we do at my church. And that's what makes this a great purchase because it grows with you as your system expands. It's also such a great form factor that if you need to live stream on the go or use it offsite somewhere, you can just throw this in a bag and go off to the races. This guy really is awesome, again, for the price and just everything that it can do. It's definitely worth picking up if your church is new to streaming and you're not really sure what to get. Again, the link is in the description if you wanna pick this thing up. I do get a small kickback if you use that link to buy it and that's much appreciated. Let me know if this is helpful to you guys or if you wanna see any other run-throughs of any of the other equipment that we use. Until next time.